everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this chomp, 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 shark bite jar cozy. Super easy to make, also super fun if you're like us and love to watch all the shark movies and videos around Shark Week. <laughs> I tried to make this one just a little bit cute and not scary. I'm also going to show you how you can add a string to it or a strap in order to make it into a little bag. It will fit your 16 ounce jars. This one's a plastic one. You can also use the glass and we'll talk more about those later. Also fits your basic can of soda. And it's a cute little bag and I'm gonna show you how to add a strap so you can carry it around and use it for a bag if you want to. Now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath the video. <laughs> to make our cute jar cozy that looks like a shark, you're going to need some yarn. I'm going to be using all Red Heart Super Saver acrylic yarns that are a medium number four. You can use cotton or a cotton blend if you want to. I just really could not find the color in cotton that I wanted for my shark, and it's fine to make it out of acrylic. I'm going to be using this soft gray and a little bit of red, a little bit of white, and a little bit of black, white for the teeth, red for the edge of their gum, and this black for the eyes. Just takes a tiny bit and about two ounces of the gray for the body and the fin. We're going to be stitching with our eye hook today. The eye hook is a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. Now some of the new hooks have the eye hook at a 5.25. That one would be fine as well. Just watch your gauge and your stitch and make sure that it's measuring to fit your jar. You may have to loosen up just a smidge. We want it to be a little bit loose. You'll need a needle for weaving in your ends and sewing on your eyes. And of course you'll need your scissors. And then the last thing you'll need, if you're going to make it for the jar cozy, if you're not, then you can just have a little extra gray for the strap. But if you're making it for a jar cozy, you're going to need a 16 ounce jar. Let me move this. And I've got a couple of good examples here. This is your basic mason jar, it's glass. We cut a hole in the top for the straw, and I'm gonna put some blue ocean water Hawaiian punch with a little bit of Sprite. So it looks like we're drinking the ocean. <laughs> but if you want to, you can put goodies inside. There's some gummy sharks out there. You can also use goldfish or a combination of things to put inside. You could even just order in some blue M&Ms to make it look like goodies. Whatever you're doing for your shark party. The plastic works great. The glass works great. And another option is you can go in your pantry and find jars that are about the same size. And when you're finished, say with a small mayonnaise or a small pickle jar, you can wash it out real good and use it for your jar cozy. These also can have the light done inside. The little LEDs you can get, I think two uh, for a dollar at your local uh, Dollar Tree. They also have them at all your craft stores and you can use it as a decoration as a luminary. So lots of options for what you can do with your Shark Bite Cozy. We'll be starting down here at the bottom and working our way up, finishing off with the gums and the teeth, and then we'll add our shark fin and the eyes. And this works up very quickly. We'll start with our slip knot and chain five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll take the tail of our yarn and wrap it over our hook and pull it through. Then we'll snug that down and we'll tie that little stay knot so our circle doesn't come undone. All right, there's a little fuzz ball on there. 
<laughs> we'll put our hook in. We'll grab our working yarn and pull it up and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And then we're going to stitch 11 more double crochets in this chain five. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two loops. So now I have three because my chain three counted as my first. And you'll notice I'm stitching over this tail of yarn and that's so when we're done with this row I can pull that and close that hole. So now we have one, two, three. Let's start that again. One, two, three, four, five, six double crochets. I need a total of 12 so I need to stitch six more in this loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, now let's make sure I didn't add too many. Here's my chain three, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. Put your hook through, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's on the hook. And we'll go ahead and chain three. Now, we're going to turn this over, and we're going to gently pull on that string. And now all we have to do is weave that in, and we won't have to come back in and weave that in later. It'll be taken care of, and the hole is closed. So I'll just go up a few stitches, Go up a stitch or two and turn around and go back. And I do that a couple of times and that's gonna keep that from coming undone. We can clip that off and we don't have to worry about that at all. So now we have our 12 double crochets in a circle joined to our chain three and chained three. For row two, our chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And so since we started with 12 double crochets on the first row, our second row will have 24 double crochets. Two double crochets in each stitch. And this is forming the bottom of our koozie or cozy, however you want to say that. We'll continue this working all the way around, stitching two double crochets in each of those stitches, and then we'll join to our chain three. I completed this row stitching two double crochets in each stitch around, so you should have 24 double crochets. We're going to join to the top of our chain three with a slip stitch. And on this row, we're just going to chain one. On row three, we're going to place one single crochet in each of the double crochets. So we'll go right in that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. That's our single crochet. So we're going to place one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. Now, because we aren't adding or subtracting any stitches, we're going to have 24 single crochets because we're just stitching one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. And then when we get back around, we're going to join to our first single crochet. Now on the double crochet row, the chain three counted as a stitch. On this single crochet row, the chain one does not count as a stitch. 
And so that's why we stitched right in that first stitch. And then you want to join to the single crochet because you don't want to accidentally add a stitch. So I'll continue around stitching one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. I completed row three, stitching one single crochet in each stitch around. I'm going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch, and then I'm going to chain three. And now on row four, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the stitches around. And this is going to be your outside, and you'll notice that it's going to start curling up. And that's what we want it to do, so it fits the jar. We're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the single crochets around. And this is the beginning of working up the side of the jar. So I'm stitching one double crochet in each of the single crochets. And again, I'll have 24 stitches. I'll work this all the way around and I'll join back to my chain three. I completed row four, one double crochet in each of the single crochets. I joined to the top of my chain three and chained three. And now for row five, we're just going to repeat that. We're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. And again, make sure you have 24 double crochets. When you join in rounds, sometimes it's easy to add or subtract a stitch. And it's real important that we stay at 24 for when we do the mouth portion of our shark, we don't want to be off a stitch or two that can mess up the way the mouth is supposed to look. So stitching one, double crochet in each double crochet around then we'll join to the chain three and chain three. I completed row five, one double crochet in each double crochet around, joined to my chain three and chained three. And what we're going to do for the next three rows is repeat row five. One double crochet in each stitch, join, chain three. One double crochet in each stitch, join and chain three. And then on the last row, one double crochet in each stitch, and join. So we're going to repeat row five three more times. I repeated those three rows, one double crochet in each stitch around, and on the last one of these repeats, instead of joining th or instead of chaining three, we only chained one. And now we're going to be doing the mouth portion. And so we're going to be doing it just a little bit different. We want to make that shape that comes up and back down and then up and back down. So what we're going to do is we're going to place one single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Then in the next two stitches, we're going to stitch a half double crochet. Yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three. And then we'll stitch a half double crochet in the next. Now this brings us to our next four stitches. In the next four stitches, we're going to be stitching a double crochet. Alright, so we have two singles, two half double crochets, and four double crochets. Now we're going to stitch a half double crochet in the next two. One 
and two. And then we'll stitch a single crochet in the next two. One and two. All right, so you can see that's starting to form the mouth of the shark. And now we're going to repeat what we just did. One single crochet in the next two. One, two, one half double crochet in the next two. One and two. Then we'll stitch four double crochets. There's two, three, and four. Then we'll stitch a half double crochet in the next two. One, two, and then we'll end with one single crochet in the last two. One and two. And then we'll join to that first single crochet and stitch a chain one. All right, so you can see how the shape of the shark mouth works. And this is why it was real important that you have those 24 stitches or you won't have enough or you'll have too many and it won't work out even. So now this next row, row 10, we're going to do exactly what we did on row nine. We're going to repeat it. So we'll go in that first stitch and stitch a single crochet and then a single crochet in the next. We'll stitch a half double crochet in those two half double crochets. Then we'll stitch one double crochet in those four double crochets. There's the fourth one. That brings us to our two half double crochets. So we'll stitch a half double crochet in those two half double crochets. And then two single crochets, one in each of the next two. See how that's forming that shape? And then we'll just repeat it on the back as well. There's our two singles, two halves. Now our four doubles. One, two, three, and four. And then our two half doubles. And end with two single crochets. One and two and join to that first single crochet and chain one just to hold it where it needs to be and now it's even more pointy and more looking like the mouth of a shark so now we're going to do the red gums of our shark so we're going to cut our yarn We're going to go ahead and pull out that chain one we put in there. That was just to hold it. And now we're going to join our red. And then chain one. It's a good rule to remember that any time that you're changing colors, do your chain one, chain two, chain three, whatever you're doing after you've done your color change. Now we're going to be stitching slip stitches in the front loops. And so you can see at the top here, we have a loop here and a loop here. Your front loop is in the front here that's facing you. Your back loop is the back loop that's facing away. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in each of the front loops and stitch a slip stitch. So we pull up a loop and then pull that loop through the loop on our hook. I'm going to snug that down just a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go in the next front loop and stitch a slip stitch. And we'll do this all the way around. 
and we're using the front loops for the red portion which is our shark gums and then when we come back in and do the little teeth we're going to be stitching in the back loop and it gives it just a little bit of a 3d effect go in the front loop pull up a loop pull that loop through the loop on your hook and you can see it looks a little bit like a little braid forming around the edge there we go and we'll continue to do this all the way around and again because we didn't add or subtract any stitches you still should have 24 stitches so that means you'll have 24 slip stitches so I'm going to continue stitching my slip stitches working in the front loops of this row and then we'll come back and do our teeth in the back loops I've completed all those slip stitches I cut my yarn and I'm going to tie off but what I'm going to do I join to the first slip stitch and I'm going to go in this loop of the next slip stitch and I'm going to pull that loop to the inside and then tie off there we go and that just gives it just a little bit neater of an appearance so now we're going to bring in our white yarn and remember we're going to be stitching in the back loops and they're going to be really easy to find because of where we placed our red stitches go in grab our white yarn and chain two one and two we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch then we'll slip stitch in the next stitch and chain two one and two then we'll slip stitch in the next stitch slip stitch in the next stitch and chain two and what this does is it makes it look like our shark teeth and the way the pattern works is one slip stitch in the next two chain two one slip stitch in the next two and chain two one two slip stitches and chain two one slip stitch two slip stitch and chain two and see how that's laying it looks really cool like the jagged teeth of your shark and it's right up against that red line where it looks like his gums or her gums could be a girl <laughs> so one slip stitch in the next two working in the back loops chain two one slip stitch in the next two chain two working all the way around there we go one and two chain two and I really like the effect I think it looks like the nice jagged teeth on a shark I completed my shark teeth I'm joining to that first slip stitch tie that off Go snug it down and now we have quite a few ends to weave in here and we'll use our needle and we'll come back in and do that but I don't want to take the time right now so here's my shark teeth his body chomp 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 <laughs> super cute and now I'm going to show you how to make the fin and it works up really quickly we're going to begin with the slip knot. Move those out of the way there. We're going to chain three. We're 
we're going to place three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we go in, pull up a loop, there's one, two, and three. We're going to chain one and turn. Then we'll place two single crochets in the first stitch. So one and two, and then one in the next two. One, two. So now we have four single crochets. We're going to chain one and turn. We're going to place one single crochet in the next three single crochets. One, two, three, and then we'll place two single crochets in the last. So now we have five single crochets and chain one. All right, so now we're going to turn and we're going to evenly single crochet down, down, and then back up. So this part's easy because we're just placing one single crochet in each of the stitches, which is five. Then we're going to go to here and place two single crochets and we're working down the side and we're going to make sure that we put our stitches in the sides of the stitches and not the holes. Okay, now we're at this point, so we're going to put two single crochets in that end point. I move that string out of the way. All right. So we single crocheted across here, we single crocheted up here, and now we're going to single crochet back up. And you can see this is a little holy, so it's a little bit difficult. Go ahead and place one in there. Then we'll go to the stitch. Remember, we want to try to get in the sides of the stitches. Sometimes we have to go in a hole, and there's nothing we can do about that. But we want to try not to do that, but sometimes we do have to. Whoops, I missed the stitch there. There we go. And now I'm back up to this corner. I get in there. There we go. We want to stitch two single crochets. And then we're going to tie off. But we don't want to cut short. We want to make sure that we left ourselves a good amount of yarn so we can sew this onto our koozie. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in the next stitch. We're going to grab that loop and pull it through and then tie that off. And there is our shark fin. It's going to sit like this. To attach our fin, we want to line it up with one of the nose points. You can decide which one you want to be the front and the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to count up one, two, here's our three and four. We're going to put our fin lined up on the fourth, probably through the seventh. And you can pin this in place if, you, if it makes you feel more comfortable. Just grab your pin. Because the way we're going to sew this, we want to make sure it's lined up. And then we're going to just take our tail of yarn and our needle, and we're just going to whip stitch it going through those loops on this side. And one thing to remember, when you're putting this on your jar, you don't want this all stretched out. So make sure you uh, don't stretch it out too much or your fin will look a little bit wonky. <laughs> Nobody wants a wonky fin, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm at the top of my fin. I sewed across. I'm going to go ahead and take that pin out. We're going to bring that up, and then we're going to turn the fin this way. All right, now we're going to go down. Get my yarns. There we go. Now we're going to go down the way we came. There we go and sew that fin on this way. 
and again we're just making whip stitches the fin shouldn't be pulled on or you know get a lot of wear and tear even though we want it to stay put so we don't have to do real close stitches just enough that it's going to stay put all right so there's my fin all right I'm going to go inside pull that to the inside and we only have the one end to weave in because we tied off with our when we finished our crochet part of our fin so we're just going to go ahead and weave this in all righty we'll go ahead and cut that and yes i still have a few ends to weave in at the top but this is the way that your shark cozy is going to sit here's your shark fin all right so the last thing that your shark needs is its eyes so cut off a piece of yarn that's black or whatever color eyes you want you might want green or blue all right so we're going to thread that onto our needle and the way we i've done the eyes is here is the stitch right in front of the fin and we're going to count down two and i'm going to go in but then i'm going to go in the stitch and I do it that way because I want to pull that to the inside all right and it's real important when you're putting your eye on that you don't stitch in a hole you want to stitch right on that stitch because it will just slide right in if you put it in a hole and we're gonna make three stitches right on that stitch then we're gonna to come to the inside and then I go ahead and tie a knot. I want my eye to stay put. And another reason you don't want to put it in a hole is when you're sliding this onto your koozie or even using it for a purse, um, it's going to get a lot of stretch and you don't want that eye to disappear. All right, so there's the one eye we're going to back here. Then we're going to go one, two, because we want the eyes to be even. And we'll do it the same way. Pull that to the inside. There we go. And now we'll just add that second eye. And I wanted to keep with just a fun little basic eye. I didn't want it to look too scary. I wanted it to be cute and silly. I want him to be a happy shark. <laughs> All right. All right, so there is our shark koozie. Yes, I have a few ends to weave in. Let's go ahead and slide it on this jar so you can see how that works. So here's our little shark koozie or cozy, all ready to be used at your shark party. But what if you want to make it into a little purse? To make the handle or the strap for the purse, I just take my gray yarn or whatever color yarn that you want we make a slip knot making sure we have a little bit of a tail and we chain about 60. now the amount of chains or length of handle is completely up to you all right but i chain 60 After we have chained our 60 chains, we tie off, leaving another tail of yarn, because we're going to use these ends to attach it to the little bag, all right? So we're going to thread it onto our needle. We're going to go to the point of the bag and just go right up in there. And we want to do this on the inside. And I like to make quite a few stitches because this is going to get a little bit of wear and tear. And we want it to hold up, right? All right, so. And now we're just going to grab the other end and do the same thing. Be careful not to um, twist it so that you have like a curl or a twist in your bag handle you don't want that to be messed up all right so we're going to go to the other point and do the same thing 
make sure when you're stitching this on that you're going through some stitches and not through the holes because you want it to hold up. Especially if you're making this for a kiddo. It might be kind of fun to take their snack to school in. Now not only do we have a chomp chomp shark bite koozie, but we also have a bag. Isn't Shark Week fun?